Can you tell us what the success rate is for people who pitch at these events? So what's the success rate uh, of, uh, for companies that pitch at these events? Uh, I, whenever I came into the, the job in Halo, one of the things I did was to go around uh, and talk to a lot of the, uh, the other angel organisations, networks within uh, the UK. And doing that research at the end of last year, of course it could have changed, what they generally said to me was about one in three pitches uh, they felt somewhere in that area uh, was, was what the success rate was. Once you got to the point of pitching, obviously not every company that applies by a long chalk gets through to pitch, uh, but they said about one in three, and uh, whilst it's a little bit dangerous having only been running now for 10 months in Halo, we're sort of in that, that area, so it seems to back that up, but Anthony, you, I'm sure, are in a better position to say. Yeah, from looking back over or 17, 15 years at London Business Angels, I'd say we're about one in three to one in four over the period in, in the more higher sort of moving economic times, probably one in three. But to put it in perspective, going back to investment readiness, we're getting nearly a thousand serious inquiries in our angel network a year for, for funding. Only 5% of those companies ever meet angels. So the attrition is incredibly, the rate is terrible. And the reason is that they just don't understand what they're getting involved in. They've been to a bank, they've been rejected, they've no collateral, they've no guarantee capability. Therefore, they're scrambling around trying to find money. They've been to friends and family, exhausted all those uh, issues. And then they're looking for this, this sum of equity. They've watched the television programs and they just don't understand what they're getting involved in. And we just don't have the resources. We run our angel network on a not-for-profit basis. We can't spend quality time trying to get these companies ready. So we all pick. 5% of all those inquiries that pitch. We only actually put 42 companies on a year to our investors. So they're very privileged to walk into a room, about as many as you here, as have here. We have about 60 investors at our event. And we would, well, this year we're funding about uh, 33%. I think we've funded 13 this year so far. And we've probably put on about 30 pitches. So the high, quite a high success rate. I'm not saying that they get every penny they need from us, but this is investors in our network backing those businesses in part, and sometimes in full, and we encourage them to go elsewhere and we introduce them to other sources of funding, co-investment funds, even other angel networks, which uh, will often get them some capital. So it's tough for those entrepreneurs. <laughs> they really have to have massive staying power to be able to last the course, because the odds are so heavily stacked against them. And going back to the statistics, if we're putting 13, 15 businesses funding out of 800, that's about 2%. The inquiries are getting funding. It's incredible, isn't it? It's just such a heavy demand. Uh, actually, just to, to add to those figures, uh, uh, the figures Anthony's talking about for, for London are very similar to ones that I've heard from other uh, business angel networks. However, in Northern Ireland, the statistics are very different, and I reckon uh, approximately half the companies that, uh, if I can use the term, seriously apply to us actually get through to pitch at the moment. But the reason for that is the sort of community aspect of Northern Ireland. We get a lot more coming to us and talking to us and talking to Steve and, and myself. And we'll, even before they apply, we'll say, no, hang on, no, you, you don't understand this yet. Go off and do this. Very often get involved with Steve in, in the connect things. Uh, so therefore, the ones that might just stick in an application to Anthony, before they, they bother doing that, we divert them off to somewhere else. Um, so, but it does change our statistics in Northern Ireland, certainly. Okay, got a question here. Um, I was just wondering about the, what Halo will do for companies once they have actually matched an investor and investee together. I mean, I, I'm a lawyer, I've been involved in a number of investments and I, I wouldn't underestimate what Robbie was saying in terms of the sophistication of the investment agreements and articles and trying to draw, particularly where you've got not only angels but perhaps some grant, funded, um, grant funding coming together as well and trying to match all of those expectations. So is there a role for a business angels network in helping the company and the, the angels to see them through that process, which can be quite painful. Uh, that, that's certainly a very interesting question. Uh, the first thing I have to do is put the health warning on this, and that is to say that we are not FSA regulated, and therefore we cannot advise. But clearly, if in no other capacity, in my personal capacity, I have a lot of experience in this, so is Richard, so is Steve, and we will often um, pro provide signposting, shall we say. I'm trying to avoid the word advice. Uh, we, we can certainly point them to examples of what other companies have done and other things like that. Uh, we do point them to other agencies. We do work very closely with Invest, for example, um, and uh, also we'll often connect them up with somebody. If they really get into difficulties, if they're in a negotiation uh, and it's going badly, 
uh, and they say, look, you know, they want X percent, can you advise? We say, no, we can't advise, but we can get a neutral, experienced businessman uh, as, uh, uh, on a pro bono basis to come in and look and give you the benefit of his experience. So there are things like that we can do. Whether or not Halo should have a role in the future where it is more proactively supporting would be a big step change. I'd be interested to know uh, uh, Anthony's experience of other networks doing that. And Helen, you may have something to say about the support aspects of that. So if you want to go first. Um, London Business Angels, which is the one I'm responsible for, has a similar model to uh, Alan's. We, we don't, we're not regulated. We don't act for the companies or the investors. We're a facilitator. So that's a key point. So once they've pitched, we've got to be very careful not to be seen to be too heavily in the camp of one or the other parties, because that may not work favorably for us in the years ahead, if we're seen to act too much for the entrepreneurs or too much for the investors. What we would tend to do is after a, a pitch event, we'd invite them to our office to have a syndicate meeting. We'd attend the syndicate meeting and set up the meeting and probably give kind of an outline term sheet as something that perhaps the entrepreneur could work towards trying to achieve at that meeting, at least try and get an A to Z of 10 or 12 points that maybe the room will agree to, to take the process forward. I think the key party that really hangs all this together is the solicitor, because often these deals close where a solicitor's effectively acting for all the parties. He's acting for the company as his client, so the company pays the fee. The entrepreneur will occasionally take special advice for a service agreement, because there won't be one. Your £2 company will never have a direct -to service agreement, that's for sure. So they, they need to enter into those and formalise their relationship with the company as employees. So that has to happen. And then they might take a little bit of outside uh, advice on some of the more nuances of the shareholders' agreement, because they've never had experience of seeing them before, and therefore they're not sure they're being corralled into something that perhaps they might regret, or even on the warranties, they may not understand the warranties. But a good facilitating solicitor goes a long way to getting this thing done. And, and in certainly of the years I've been involved, that's worked particularly well. But it's got to be a solicitor that can handle the, the workload and the pressure of the conflicting potential interests and, and, and be comfortable with that. These are small deals, you know, we're not trying to come up with 80 page shareholder agreements, destroy everybody's uh, attention and concentration. Sure, okay. I'm sure you're very pleased to hear that comment about <laughs> needing a good solicitor. Helen, do you want to add a comment? And, uh, well, you see, I would reiterate that point. There are others there to do that. Um, if we were in any shape or form, and I know Alan would agree with me, um, destroy the impartiality um, of what Halo does. Um, it's there to broker for both sides. Um, it can't be seen to take any side. Um, I think Alan and the Halo Network have struck that so well, um, and it would be lovely to be able to uphold it and, uh, and not change the role. Okay, so I'd like to thank the panel very much. That's uh, just about all the time that we've got for, for the, the panel session. Um, just before I hand over to Alan uh, and let the panel come and sit down, um, just to remind everybody we've got the questionnaires in everybody's pack. Uh, in about five or ten minutes, we're going to have tea and coffee downstairs for anybody who wants to hang around and chat more about what they've heard. But if, if everybody could just join me in thanking the panel for a uh, very good session. Right, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, I'll not come between you and your coffee for too much longer. First thing I must do is a thank you, and that is, uh, although Halo is itself funded by Invest and Intertrade, Invest have been kindly sponsoring this angel awareness campaign, both this specific meeting and the workshop coming up on the 3rd of November. We're extremely pleased. Thank you to Invest for doing that. Uh, it's nice to be part of a national campaign, and we hope that there will be more similar examples of this to our benefit in the economy here. Um, Steve has asked you to, to fill in the, uh, the forms which you have there. We'd be interested in your feedback. Uh, we are also uh, very interested to know if you want to get involved more. Uh, the 3rd of November workshop, 4 to 6 o'clock in the Science Park. A great chance to come along. Those of you who are professional services companies, you've got basically two weeks to round up some of your clients and say, come along, these guys are good, find out more about it, that would be brilliant. Uh, and similarly then, uh, we're looking for potential angels who'd like to come along and really just suck it and see, 17th of November, Innovation Centre, uh, meal, 40 plus angels, six companies, it's going to be good, um, but you do need to speak to us about that, it's not an open meeting, we have to uh, um, obviously filter the people that are coming in. And for those of you um, who are professional services again, remember, buy four, get one free, that's the way you can get into the room. So thank you all very much for attending. Thanks to the panelists, to the speakers, to Steve for sorting it all out. Enjoy the coffee, 
and thanks for coming along. Thank you.